A prodigy is defined as a person, especially a young one, endowed with exceptional qualities or abilities. We see a lot of those in Naruto. But out of all of the exceptionally prodigious shinobi that we see, who is the most prodigious? In other words, today we'll be exploring and taking on the tantalizing task of ranking Naruto's prodigies. But before we begin exploring anything, for more Naruto discussions, battle breakdowns, and rankings, please make sure to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell to be among the first to know when new content drops. Without any further ado, let's begin. So let's start with the obvious. Any ranking list comprised of fictional characters can almost never be 100% objectively correct, as there are multiple interpretations of the information and lack of information in any given series. However, I believe the list I've compiled is pretty fair as it includes a balance of feats, statements, and educated guesses based on the information the Naruto series provides us to present you with a ranking list that seems to be pretty much on track with both the measurables and narrative-based implications that we get in the story. That said, a quick breakdown of my ranking process goes as follows. The character feats plus the age at which they accomplish such feats plus series statements plus narrative implications equals prodigy score. I'll also mostly be considering what these characters did in their youth as opposed to later on in life as that would sort of defeat the purpose of making a video about prodigies. I would like to note that basically we're trying to measure who has the most raw talent combined with their ability to maximize that raw talent. So people with clan-based kick again kai or other genetic advantages or power-ups that are handed to them, they will be docked points in regard to this because, you know, anybody with a genetic advantage like the kick again kai will have an easier time getting to a higher power level than somebody without one. So although overall power at a young age will be factored in, we're taking a look at who is the most talented or best prodigy, not who had the coolest power given to them at a young age. For example, Gara will not make this list, not because he's not strong or even stronger than some of the characters on the list, but because his entire moveset comes from Shukaku, a tailed beast equivalent to a nuke that was handed to him at birth. Now, he did have challenges overcoming it, but at the same time, he always had access to this, and again, his entire moveset is built around it. Uh, that doesn't mean that those types of characters won't be considered, but rather that it's graded on a scale. Those with the most basic genetics slash power sets that become monsters in their own right get the advantages over those who have said advantages and get to that same level. With that out of the way, let's hit some honorable mentions. These characters all have a case for making the list, but miss out because we simply don't know enough about what they could actually do, they had such great genetic advantages that they really should have been stronger, or a combination of both. These honorable mentions are in no particular order as follows. Hashirama, Tobirama, Madara, Orochimaru, Killer B, A, Onoki, Haku, Sasuke, Neji, Kabuto, and Kimimaru. Again, all of these characters are prodigies for sure, but either mostly got by on genetic advantages and or power-ups, or we simply don't have enough information on their youth years to put them on the list. But now, on to the real list. Coming in at number 5... We have a tie between Itachi and Shisui. Now, I know some of you are going to think that these two are way too low, but both of them have largely been carried by their genetic advantage of being an Uchiha. However, their skillfulness outside of the Sharingan with their mastery of the Sharingan abilities given to them, plus the insane heights that they reached, lead me to believe that they should be on this list. The reason that we have a tie, though, is because we're not really sure how old Shisui was when he died, and therefore have no idea when he accomplished all of the feats that he did. However, what I've decided to do is take the most conservative estimate based on the time he grew up in and the context of the story surrounding his time as a shinobi. But uh, what, what do I mean by that? Well, since we know concretely that he unlocked his Mangekyo on the battlefield shortly after the Third War, we can safely surmise that he was an academy student during the Third War. This would accelerate his graduation time, as even characters not considered to be prodigies like Rin and Obito graduated at 8 and 9 years old due to the fact that a war was going on and they needed more soldiers. The data books show that Mike Guy graduated at 7 years old and Kakashi graduated at 5 years old, which makes sense because he was the prodigy of his generation. 
since Shisui is stated to be one of the most talented Uchiha, we can safely surmise that he likely graduated either slightly early or right on time. However, since Kakashi is directly stated to be the youngest graduate ever by Itachi, who would know what age Shisui graduated at, Shisui definitely didn't graduate at 5. This means that he likely graduated at 6 or 7, but no older than 8 years old. If that's the case, then according to this excerpt from the Itachi Daylight novel, he awoke the manga Kyosharingan a year after graduating, making him either 7 or 8 years old when this happened. And then, you know, he met Itachi a year after that at 8 or 9 years old, making him about 3 to 4 years older than Itachi. But if he awoke his mangekyo at that age, you might be saying, shouldn't he fall into the category of someone who was just way too genetically gifted to be on this list? Yes and no. You see, in order to awaken his Mangekyo, Shisui had to have mastered his base 3 Tomo Sharingan by the age of 6 or 7 years old. This is insane. Uh, we know that it took Sasuke, who's considered a prodigy in his own right, over a year to unlock just the 3 Tomo Sharingan and then a few more years to fully master it. So even though he was blessed with Uchiha genetics, Shisui made the absolute most of them at a very young age. However, the thing that really gets him on this list is the reputation he was able to build for his skill. Uh, remind me, even though he stated by both B and Itachi to have the best Sharingan Genjutsu over the Tsukiyomi, was Shisui known as Shisui of the Sharingan? No, he was known as Shisui of the Body Flicker for his absolute mastery over the technique, even being able to create multiple after images just using his raw speed. This led him to be known as the best user of the body flicker technique in the world, garnering fear and respect worldwide by the time he was just a teenager. And it's a good thing he was able to use this so well too, since his Koto Matsukami took 10 years to recharge. By the way, the fact that he knew that it took 10 years to recharge leads me to believe that he likely died right around 10 years after awakening his Mangekyo, putting his death age right around 17 years old. This actually corroborates his graduation age that we hypothesized because if he would have met Itachi whenever he was around, you know, 8 years old, he would have been 3 years older than Itachi, 9 years old, he would have been 4 years older than Itachi, and then at that point in time, whenever he dies, Itachi he was 13, meaning that 17 years old is about right, and that means he awoke his Mangekyo at about 7 years old. So the timeline lines up, and this also is somewhat corroborated by his height and weight being that of an adult in the data book. So the reason I have Shisui tied with Itachi is because if he did do all of this at the ages hypothesized, I believe he should be at the 4 and not the 5, since he didn't rely nearly as heavily on the genetically advantageous ability of the Sharingan as Itachi did, but rather his skill with the body flicker in order to reach similar heights to Itachi if not higher. However, since we don't concretely know how old he was when he graduated, you could make a legitimate argument that instead of graduating between six and eight years old, maybe he did at nine or ten, making him less prodigious than Itachi. However, I do think that the younger age sort of lines up with the narrative a little bit better, it's just really difficult to prove. Therefore, I feel comfortable putting him right on par with Itachi, either being slightly higher or slightly lower, depending on your interpretation of the data that we have. But speaking of Itachi, while he does rely heavily on his Sharingan abilities, he was also incredibly skilled before awakening at, at just 8 years old. At 7 years old, he's even said to have had the mind of a Hokage. Itachi also boasts the second highest written exam scores and the fastest forest of death time ever up until Gaara eventually surpasses him, but that's not even the most impressive part. During the written exams, he was also breaking down strategies against each and every participant, and then being in the forest of death, getting that record, he literally completed it in record time by himself. Even Kakashi noted how much of a prodigy that Itachi was whenever he was in the Anbu with him. Speaking of the Anbu, Itachi before even awakening his MS became an Anbu member at just 11 years old. The standard was always a minimum age of 12 years old, but Danzo convinced Hiruzen to falsify Itachi's age so that he could be added to the Anbu early. After Itachi awoke his MS at 13 though, he grew more powerful than ever before. The Tsukiyomi, Amaterasu, and Susano all became available to him at this point. However, since that's one of those genetic advantages that I was referring to and not 
not something based on skill or talent alone. It's not something that really matters here, it just felt worth noting. So Itachi and Shisui make up the 4 and 5 spots on this list, with either of them being able to be in either position. As I said before, if we take Shisui's graduation age to be at 6 or 7, he is clearly above Itachi due to his unparalleled use of the body flicker and quick ascension of the shinobi ranks. However, if we assume that he graduated on or behind schedule compared to his peers, he's not the same level of prodigy due to Itachi's next level mind even as a child. So I personally have Itachi at 5 and Shisui at 4, but you know, you can flip flop them depending on how you interpret it. But if those two, two of the greatest prodigies ever, come in at 4 and 5, who in the world is above them? Well, coming in at number 3, appropriately, we have Lord 3rd, Hiruzen Saritobi. That's right, Hiruzen was a next level prodigy. Honestly, he could probably be at the top of this list, but we simply don't have enough info on his youth years to put him any higher. What we do have, however, is an absolutely ridiculous data book statement and an insane promotion age. Let's go ahead and start with the data book statement. It goes as follows, quote, Showing his talent that surpassed the second from childhood, from mastering the five nature transformations to secret techniques and genjutsu, he took the name of Professor because he explained all the jutsu that exist in Konoha. End quote. This statement, if taken literally, means that he mastered all five nature transformations along with some secret techniques and genjutsu in his childhood, since that's what's stated to have shown his greater talent in comparison to the second, Tobi Rama. As far as we know, this would make Hiruzen the only shinobi ever to master all five natures in his childhood. Although other shinobi such as Kakashi and Orochimaru are shown to have mastered all five nature transformations by adulthood, the fact that Hiruzen showed his greater talent and potential in comparison to Tobirama by mastering all five transformations and learning multiple secret techniques in genjutsu in his childhood makes him a nearly unparalleled prodigy. So that by itself does get him on this list, but I'm not sure if it would get him to the number three spot. But we do have one more piece of information, or sort of a combination of pieces of information that could lead to a conclusion that should get him this high. So we know that in part one, Hiruzen is between 68 and 69 years old, while the Sanin are between 50 and 51 years old. We also know that during his time on Team Tobirama, Hashirama was still alive. We also know that the Sanin were alive before the first Shinobi War, because we see toddler Tsunade with Hashirama, and Tobirama took over as Hokage after Hashirama's death. Since Tobirama is already a Hokage by the first Shinobi War, this, this all lines up. So, since Hiruzen was still on Team Tobirama and not leading his own squad at the time of being appointed, we know that he was appointed Hokage before the Sanin turned six years old. If we assume the Sanin are no older than two, and I hate doing this, but Tsunade looks about two here, then Hiruzen was likely around 19 to 20 years old when appointed Hokage. That is insane. I'll also note that Hiruzen calls himself the most accomplished among the group that he was in, that included Danzo, Kagame Uchiha, and even Tobi Rama. Now, you could make the claim that he probably wasn't referring to Tobi Rama, and I think that that's probably accurate, but he was also certain that he wouldn't die against the Kinkaku Force, the group of 20 highly skilled shinobi that Tobi Rama defeated and ended up succumbing to his wounds after the battle against them. Now, typically, I don't take statements like this as fact, but we know that the Hiruzen isn't arrogant, so it's very possible that he was making that claim that he wouldn't die, fully believing it, and not out of arrogance. That said, since Tobirama did succumb to his wounds against the Kinkaku Force, while it is admittedly a jump, you could make an argument that this means that 19 to 20 year old Hiruzen is relative to or stronger than a 50-ish year old Tobirama, and since a shinobi reaches their prime in their 40s to 50s, as shown by the Sanin being at their strongest at that point in time in their lives, and you know, then Kakashi now is the strongest ever been aside from DMS. Uh, this is insanely impressive. So to quickly recap, in Hiruzen we have a guy who mastered all five major transformations as a child and became Hokage at 19 or 20 years old without any crazy genetic advantages like the Sharingan or any abilities handed to him. Pure hard work and talent. So how could anyone possibly stack up against that, right? 
Well, there is another character who even here is in considered to be greater than himself, a once-in-a-generation talent. At number two, we have Minato Namikaze. Now, Minato's graduation and tuning promotion ages aren't insane, but what he did shortly after that definitely is. Minato graduated at 10 years old and was promoted to Chunin at 12, snagging the record for best written exam scores of all time in the process. He then went on to become a Jonin by no later than 15 years old. Kakashi graduated at 5, so Minato had to have been a Jonin by 15 as he's 10 years older than Kakashi. This is impressive, but not overly impressive compared to what we've seen so far in this list. However, where it gets crazy is what he did during the Second Shinobi War as a mere 13 to 14 year old. You see, during the time of the one-shot manga, Minato was a maximum of 14 years old. We know this because he's 10 years older than Kakashi, and Kakashi graduated at 5 years old and became a Chunin at 6, meaning that he would have been on the battlefield at 6 years old. We know that he didn't participate in the Second War, but that the Second and Third Wars rolled into one another, so if we assume a year's difference between the end of the Second and beginning of the Third, Minato would have been 16 when the Third War was going on, as Kakashi would have been 6. This leaves a 3-4 to four year time span for the Third War, which makes sense because the Kanabi Bridge mission almost brought a close to the war, and Kakashi would have been around 9 or 10 at that point in time. So, again, Minato is a maximum of 14, but probably closer to 13 during the one-shot manga. This is also corroborated by the fact that we see Kakashi, Guy, and Obito in the one-shot manga, and they haven't graduated yet because they don't have their headbands. So, this would have made Kakashi around 4 years old, which lines up with Minato being about 14. Now, this is insane. For one, by this time, Minato had mastered the FTG to the point that he was able to te uh, teleport his entire platoon away from two bijou bombs. But also, Minato invented the Rasengan at this age after seeing a bijou dama one time. He saw it, he said, that'd be nice to have, and he made a Rasengan. <laughs> now, it begins to make sense why Minato was called by Jiraiya a one-of-a-kind talent when you know this. But it doesn't stop there. Minato was also so adept at sealing jutsu at this point that he was able to suppress a full Kurama, augmenting the tetragram seal with his own style, a feat that led Kurama to compare Minato to Hashirama. This is absurd. And that's not even all of it. Minato is also likely the youngest or second youngest Hokage of all time. You see, the Third War went on for about six months to a year after the Kanabi Bridge mission that left Obito half crushed. At this time, Minato would have been just 20 or 21 years old. We know this because, again, Minato is 10 years older than Kakashi, and Kakashi was a mere 9 or 10 years old during the Kanabi Bridge mission. We know this because he and Obito graduated on the same day, and Kakashi was 5 while Obito was 9, leaving a 4 year gap in their ages. Since Kakashi would have been 10 or 11 when the war ended, followed immediately by Minato's promotion to Hokage, Minato was either 20 or 21 when promoted to Hokage. Then, as Hokage, Minato was respected as and shown to be the strongest shinobi in the village, even above what would have been a prime Hiruzen. So, to review, Minato has the best written exam scores of all time, mastered the FTG by 13 or 14, developed the Rasengan at around the same age after seeing the inspiration for it, a bijou bomb, once, was literally compared to Hashirama by Kurama, had sealing jutsu on par with the Uzumaki clan, and became Hokage at a mere 20 years old. All of this while having zero genetic advantages or power-ups handed to him. I mean, you cannot even name another Nimikaze before him. It's crazy. So, I know what you're thinking. Many of you are probably saying, Sage, how can anyone possibly top that? If Minato is number two, who in the world is number one? Great question. Thank you for asking. Coming in at number one, we have the greatest prodigy in the history of Naruto, Kakashi Hatake. Now, I'm going to say something that might shock you. Kakashi being at number one here shouldn't even be a debate. 
It's not even close. Kakashi is the youngest Genin, Chunin, and Jonin of all time at ages 5, 6, and 10. He's the second youngest Anbu member ever at 12 years old, behind only Itachi, who honestly got ushered in early because Danzo wanted to use him for his own purposes due to the darkness inside of him. That's not to say that he wasn't worthy of the position, just that, as Danzo stated, the standard Anbu age minimum was 12 years old, but that he wanted to make an exception for Itachi. Again, due to his darkness. Those aren't the only things that make Kakashi head and shoulders above every other prodigy ever though. You see, not only was Kakashi already a Jonin at the same age Minato was graduating from the academy, he also already had two a rank jutsu in his arsenal, in the Chidori and the Rasengan. So not only did he also develop an a rank jutsu in the Chidori at nine years old, just like his master did, but you know, three to four years younger, he also learned and mastered the a rank jutsu developed by Minato in the Rasengan. Kakashi at this time would have mastered at least two changes in chakra nature as well in lightning and earth styles, as two changes in chakra nature being mastered is a qualification for becoming a Joni. So before Kakashi ever got the Sharingan, he was already the youngest Genin, Chunin, and Jonin of all time, had mastered two changes in chakra nature, and could whip out two a rank jutsu in the midst of battle. This is ridiculous, but it doesn't even stop there. You see, after acquiring the Sharingan, Kakashi proceeded to master it in less than a year as a non-Uchiha. We know this because he has a three-tomo Sharingan when he kills Rin, which was about six months to a year after Obito's crushing, which is when he got the Sharingan. But even before Rin's death, Kakashi had also become a lightning timer because he cut lightning with his Chidori. This makes him by far the fastest 11 year old in the series, including Minato. Then to top it all off, even after getting a severe mental nerf from the deaths of Rin and Minato, Kakashi went on to become the greatest Anbu member of all time, earning renown worldwide as the copy ninja Kakashi, all within his eight year stint in the Anbu. And I know some of you might be saying, well, you can't really consider when he got the Sharingan because it was kind of a power up. Well, yes and no. We do know that it allowed him to, you know, complete his Chidori, but we also know that it was a constant strain on his chakra. And him being a non Uchiha, he doesn't really have crazy chakra levels. So, Whenever he gets older after losing the Sharingan, he actually becomes stronger without it, albeit, you know, a year or two after losing it. So we do know that, yes, it brought an advantage to him, but the fact that he was able to master it and use it so efficiently is the only reason why it was actually helpful to him. Because, again, it was a constant drain on his chakra, so it gave a benefit, but it also gave a detriment in a similar way. But before even receiving the Sharingan, Kakashi had the pedigree to be called the greatest prodigy in the history of Naruto, but then he went on to overcome his genetic disadvantages and master the Sharingan in short order. All of this makes Kakashi Harake the greatest prodigy in the history of Naruto. So let's review. At an interchangeable 4 and 5, we have Itachi and Shisui. Both characters were known as prodigies from a very young age, even before awakening their Sharingan. They then went on to master their Sharingan in a very short time, catapulting themselves into the upper echelon of Shinobi at that time. However, they do get docked some points for their overwhelming genetic advantages. At number 3, we have Hiruzen, arguably the youngest Hokage ever, who showed more innate talent than Tobirama in childhood by mastering all five nature transformations. At number two, we have Minato, a man who mastered the FTG and high-level ceiling while developing an A-rank jutsu all before his 15th birthday. He then went on to become likely the second youngest Hokage of all time. And finally, we have Kakashi, the youngest at each promotion age in history, mastering two high-level jutsu, one of which he developed all before his 10th birthday, then going on to establish a legacy as the greatest Anbu member, Cold Blood Kakashi, the copy ninja Kakashi, all as a teenager. And that brings an end to our list. But what did you guys think? Did I miss something? Was I 100% correct? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you liked the video, make sure to like the video and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out when new content drops. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Have an awesome day.